This is Tyler, your antisocial critic and the host of the Antisocial Network, your number one source for anachronistic conversations online. Come join us each week to hear opinions from some of the best voices discussing entertainment, politics, religion, and modern life on the internet today. Most of which you've never heard of, but I have. This week, we're joined by Twitter's favorite power couple, Clay and Bethany. Bethany is a former intern at the Daily Wire and currently works and runs the uh, Bill Whittle uh, Twitter department, uh, Twitter account. And I'm not as familiar with what Clay does, but they're both they're both. Uh, he also helps me with the account, actually. Okay, he does a lot of it. Okay, I didn't I didn't know if it was run by one person or if both you guys worked on that together. Yeah, it was. Oh, nice mug you got there. Oh yeah, I'm. I went all out for all for this. <laughs> I think That's I, great. I, I I got this a couple years ago. Oh. I think I was the last person to get it before they canceled mugs. So I should have worn my one of my little the little shirts, but I didn't think of it. Yeah, same. Speaking of which, I was just, I was joking with Clay that I have a spare Bill Whittle shirt. If anyone. I, they sent it to me when I ordered a they, uh, I, I ordered a bumper sticker and it arrived three months late, so they gave me a free shirt. I have two already, so if anyone wants one, I will I'll, I'll expense uh, I'll expense give it away to anyone that that's willing to yell at me on Twitter. But <laughs> but yeah, so I I just I wa- Bethany, I watched your podcast with Ginger this morning, where you kind of talked about how you guys met and. Uh, how you got to work at the Daily Wire and what that experience was like. But in the years since, you obviously became, you guys became the, the heads of the Bill Whittle uh, Twitter account. Can you kind of bridge the gap with how, the, how that happened and what's happened since uh, you went, since the end of that podcast? Um, okay. You go ahead. I, I think I'm better equipped for yeah. this one. Um, so after she had left, we were talking about what we could kind of get Bethany to do that was still in the um, political arena of doing things. And I'm, and I brought up, I'm like, Bill Whittle has zero social media right now. Um, He just, he, Bill hates it. He hates every part of it. He hates. (laughs) It's true. Yeah. um, He hates the, he likes the interaction, but he hates the mean comments. He hates how it's just destroy, destroy, destroy. It's not about building anything. It's just a lot of negativity and just, I mean, this is no secret. Bill has depression issues. And so for him just going on and seeing bad thing after bad thing on the internet is just not helpful for him. So he just um, stopped going on Twitter and stopped using his Instagram. And even in the the later days of those accounts still being active. It wasn't Bill who was using them either. Uh, he still had those outsourced. Um, but I had commented to Bethany of, hey, uh, you know, let's contact Bill and see if you can do his social media because uh, Bethany has a bunch of different Twitter accounts, which uh, I'm sure she can talk a lot better about those than I can. Most uh, notably, the Louder with Crowder mug account. <laughs> Which yeah. is that? Uh, so, to make a long story short, Bethany had tried contacting Bill, and it was really going nowhere Of because Bill's a busy guy, and it's really hard to pin him down on one thing. So, he's bouncing around everywhere. And then I met him at a event in Ramona, California, May I also mention, this was, like, months after, like, we assume, like, we kind of assumed that he was done, and he may have assumed we were done because we weren't still pestering him. Okay, continue. Yeah, there was a lot of pestering going on because uh, Bill is a busy guy and he gets distracted easily. Um, So I had, I found out he was doing an event in Ramona, which is about an hour away from my house. Um, actually it's a little further than that but the drive out there is beautiful so I didn't mind going Um, so I ran into him there and I'm like uh, when he was meeting with people after I was told him I'm like hey it's a bummer this didn't get worked out and he's like you know what actually I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you brought that up because I need to talk to you about that and so 
I waited until the end of the uh, event till everybody got their chance to talk with Bill. And uh, after that, we started talking. Uh, I got Bill Bethany's address and her email address. And so that was able to get brought up again. And that's pretty much where it started. The current account that is getting used right now for Twitter was originally a fan account that I had made, but I had gotten busy and I didn't take it too seriously. So for the longest time, it just, it got started and then it just immediately turned into a dead account. So that's after Bethany took it over, um, it became official and uh, that's where we're at now. Mm -hmm. How do you guys have these incredible connections to the Daily Wire people? Because I know, I like if you, their Twitter on Twitter especially, there's that inner circle of people. With I, I forget everyone that's involved, but it's just the same people that kind of hover in the orbit of the Daily Wire people. And and, and Bethany, your, your story is on Ginger's podcast of of being of going up to Jeremy Boring and and, and him being like, "It's you." Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm like, how does how does that come about? Where you, you, are you guys just were you guys just hanging out in the in the fandom for a long time, or? Like, uh, well, I'll, I'll start. I was friends with Bethany and Laurel, and that's how they got me in. And so now Bethany can take it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's just he's just getting little bits of our fame. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> well, it's, I, well, it's 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 certainly an, an incredible networking ability, if nothing else. I mean, uh, I would have zero sway in real life because I'm a very awkward person. <laughs> but um, uh, definitely it was something, when I first got on Twitter, it had to, I don't know. When I first got on Twitter, like I'm like, yeah, Daily Wire, I'm, I'm the kind of person who, when I like something, I go in it all the way. Like, um, if it's like, I liked Louder with Crowder, so I made a mug account. <laughs> and it's a really cute mug account. Or, like, I've had, um, I had a Twitter account for Blithering Prevarication the Third, which, for those of you familiar with Andrew Clavin's show, was a very obscure character that Andrew Clavin would bring up as a fake newscaster. Um, who would like say would have ridiculous uh, press briefings and ridiculous articles that were, were basically a nothing sandwich. <laughs> um, uh, I was just like, I was a big fan. Um, I'd say I'm pretty creative, which uh, tends to be a little bit more rare in conservative circles than say liberal circles. So I guess that's what made me stand out. Also, the fact that I'm a woman, um, that that stands out. I mean, girls get way more Twitter followers than guys. It just happens. Um, Any commentary so, on that last comment, Clay? Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. all true. Like my, my Twitter got to about 350 people, and then it just became dead in the water. So I yeah, yeah. I didn't follow him for like months. I kept mixing him up with someone else. <laughs> oh no! He would yeah, comment I, on my stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, he's one of those other randos. Yeah, I initially got on Twitter to follow Stephen Crowder and Dale Earnhardt Jr. That was it, <laughs> and and it just grew from there. The problem is, is you have too much conservatism. You have a don't tread on me flag that kind of gives it away. Yeah, I mean, one of my neighbors gave that to me. And so it's been hanging up in my room ever since. He had a picture of Ted Cruz taped to his high school, taped over his high school desk. Yeah, it, it was on the ceiling over my desk in my AP political science class <laughs> uh, because... Uh, Okay, so when I was in high school, it was my senior year of high school, which was 2015, and um, I had no idea what PJ Media was. Uh, I had found it because of some right-wing Facebook uh, page that they were posting uh, 
different PJ Media v- videos. One of them was Zoe Rachel. That was the first one that I found. And prior to that, I had just been watching Fox News and I thought Ted Cruz was the coolest guy ever uh, because he's like one of the few people in Congress who actually is willing to put his money where his mouth is most of the time. Um, I think you and I are the only people left that actually like Ted Cruz at this point. Am I? Hey, Ted Cruz. I still wait. I wait, take it back. And, I, I take it back. The three people, and then whoever else is in is part of the Daily Wire circle. Because every time I meet someone in person, they think that it, that Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer, like unironically. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that I mean. What, was it Lindsey Graham who said that Ted Cruz could be murdered on the Senate floor and uh, everybody would look the other way? So, <laughs> so if you want to know how people's feelings about Ted Cruz were, I, that was prior to the 2016 election before we got Lindsey Graham 2.0. But, well, that was, I mean, also, Ted, that was also right after the, uh, what, what was his big scandal from 2014, the, the government shutdown? Where he was, yeah, and where he had a uh, filibuster where he read green eggs and ham. <laughs> that was awesome. You know, te- I, you know, I respect that level of trollery. Just, I mean, there's, technically, you don't have to read anything pertinent during the filibuster. So, why not? yeah, it's just get up there and talk. <laughs> and I, Ted Cruz once said that um, from around that time, you always know when somebody's going to filibuster when they show up. Um, to Congress wearing Nikes or some other type of comfortable shoes. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, there's been there's photos of filibusters where the guys what would what would they would walk in with like you know crates of papers because they'd spent all night preparing for it and they just would not stop talking for the entire time. It's but yeah. Anyway, Ted Cruz. Oh. Yeah, I yeah, can't so, find my mug. I forgot. I left it out at a friend's house. Oh. Yeah. So, So, um, yeah, it it was around the end of that, uh, that around the end of senior year that I, uh, found PJ Media and from Zoe Rachel, I found Steven Crowder, Andrew Clavin and Bill Whittle when they were all consolidated at that one network. And, um, it was through Bill and seeing the videos that he had done for Truth Revolt, which I think we're still all under the afterburner and firewall uh banners um that i found ben shapiro and so i found these guys prior to the daily wire um to which it's amazing how many people now have no idea what pj media even is uh bill whittle was recently on the uh babylon b podcast oh yeah ethan nicole had said you know, I, I think of you as the Gandalf to Ben Shapiro. You know, just the, the top guy before the top guy. <laughs> and it's kind of one of those things, it's like, it, he was at the top of the ladder and when it comes to conservative commentary, and nobody now knows who the heck he is. Uh, well, which, he, we're trying to change some of that. Um, we, yeah. don't, we don't currently have access to Bill's verified accounts. We're trying to change that, but Bill's a busy guy and he gets distracted and But uh, I don't get distracted ever. No, not at all. Okay, um, sometimes maybe. <laughs> and so uh we're we're trying to get access to those just because of the follower counts that are on them. Uh meanwhile still building the new infrastructure for his uh social media. We're trying to move it away more from Bill himself to the whole Bill Whittle network of um, right angle, um, virtue, signal. virtue signal, and all the other shows that Stratus he's doing. Lounge. Yeah, uh, the lightning round is part of. That's part lightning. of right angle. Yeah, but yeah, we're trying to do it more towards the whole network and not just Bill Whittle um, specifically. Moving back to America and firewall. Mm-hmm. It's taken me a while. <laughs> He has a lot of random shows. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. Does, he puts out a lot of content. What, what, like? Oh yeah, he puts out like I'm gonna guess like ten videos a week. That's pretty insane. I mean, that that's what the algorithms yeah. obviously want. They want 
long content, they want a lot of it because they want people to constantly update and to constantly be able to put up a uh, ad. So that's the fact that he does that. I'm surprised he doesn't get caught in the algorithm more frequently. Okay, so something oh, about he's been that. Hit. Yeah, no, tw uh, YouTube very, very much knows who he is. And Bill Whittle does not dot com does not have the type of money that Louder with Crowder does. So Bill can't just make a lawsuit and really hit them. He he doesn't have enough money for that. Um Bill's also a very honorable guy. And by that I mean he is not one of these people to shamelessly uh self promote himself. And that hurts him too, where he he truly waits to get invited onto somebody's show, and uh, at that point, you know, because everybody else asks, uh, Bill kind of gets forgotten about. Um, the reason why he was on Mike Rowe is because uh, I forget if he asked or uh, they reached out to him. I forget which happened. What, but, which um, Mike Rowe show was he on? Huh? Which Mike Rowe show was he on? Um, he was on last week's episode. I mean, it was the I mean, same. I mean, was he on the on a podcast or was he on Dirty Jobs? Uh, he, <laughs> he was on the podcast. He was on um Dirty Jobs politics. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. It's like, wait a minute, Bill Whittle went on Dirty Job. Well, I guess it fits, but politics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it was on. Um, let me look it up here. Um, the way I heard it with Mike Rowe. He was on um, episode 215, Han Shot First. That sounds like the episode he would be in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he was on that, and then he was on the Babylon B because um, there was a, a Stratosphere Lounge episode. This was, this was Clay's genius idea, by the way. Yeah, okay, so everybody who watches Bill Whittle's Stratosphere Lounge should know this episode because Bill Whittle got up in the middle of his show and left for like two minutes. The reason why that happened is because I was late to going to watch uh, Stratosphere Lounge. Not my fault. There were... So, I live in Temecula. I had to drive to LA. That's about a hour terrible. and 30 minute drive when the traffic is good. The traffic is never good going from Temecula to L.A. I had three car accidents I had to deal with to get up there, and that delayed me significantly. So I parked. I literally parked two blocks away. I ran from my car to the building that the Stratosphere Lounge is in. And when I got there, it was locked. All the doors were locked. Now, somebody had seen me and unlocked the door for me. I had not seen that. So when Bill finally left the show to come and get me downstairs, um, one of the doors was unlocked to my incredible embarrassment. And um, I, we both ran up and got back to the show. And you got to love the, the Bill Whittle audience where they were laughing like, bring us back the chair. Because there had been so much <laughs> dead air. Um, which, again, I am super embarrassed about. But, uh, yeah, it was at the end of that show, I told him, hey, would you go on to the Babylon Bee podcast uh, if I could get you on? And he's like, I'd love to do it. So I texted Bethany because Bethany is a lot better at building people up. And I said, go message the Babylon Bee and uh, tell them that they want Bill Whittle on, or that we want Bill Whittle on. I will say, as unimpressive as I am in person, um, I the one thing I can claim skills for are my writing skills. So and getting people in contact with one another. Apparently, well, that's something to be proud of. I'm I'm always proud of the fact that I managed to get uh, Kyle Mann to go on uh, Hollywood and Toto's podcast. So that's just, awesome. Just being able to kind of just. Be, being able to kind of talk to people and get them to show up like that is it's it's, it's really rewarding. Being like two people I respect are talking, and it's because of me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I will say that this. was my my favorite moment of that ever was getting Clay to meet Bill Whittle. Honestly, because 
<laughs> Kalei is such a huge fan. They just like immediately hit it off and they were just best friends. Yeah, like I said, I, I was a fan of Bill Whittle prior to the Daily Wire becoming a thing. And so for me to meet Bill was like, I, I had gone to Daily Wire backstage. So I met, you know, all of the hosts um, except Candace uh, last year or no, two years ago now. And um, that was kind of like, oh, yeah, this this is really cool. You know, that I'm able to meet these people because none of these people were like my hero heroes. So it wasn't as I wasn't as starstruck I'm as telling other Jeremy. people were. <laughs> uh, that, that's a funny story in itself of uh, it, of Jeremy meeting me. Uh, that's a funny story in itself. But I had met these people and it's like, OK, this is cool. But then I got to meet Bill at the Daily Wire office and I'm just like okay, this is cool. And to really start to build a friendship with Bill is um, one of the most shocking and one of the th most grateful things I, or one of the biggest things I'm most grateful for right now. I, mean, I can definitely attest that there's a, there's a bit of starstruck in meeting your, in people like that. I mean, in my, in my experience, political pundits aren't the same thing as celebrities just because they don't have the same ego when I've met them. I mean, I haven't met too many people, but I've networked with enough people and spoken with enough people that, to know that they're not, they don't, they're not full of themselves in the way that celebrities are to the point where... I, I've know, heard the ones who are on TV, like on network TV sometimes are, but not so much the uh, internet punditry. Well, yeah, because there are, most of them are homegrown people working out of their basements that just so happened to get, develop a following and then realize years later that they had thousands and thousands of people that were like go turning to them for their political analysis. So I don't think that's conducive towards creating a massive celebrity ego. But it is. But even as a fan, I still tend to get that starstruck attitude where, like, I I, I wish I could have the opportunity to meet Bill Whittle or talk to him someday. But I, I like I, I, I but I know if I ever did, he'd be like. He's probably a pretty down to earth guy, and we could, and it would be a very casual discussion. But oh. Bill, like, Bill is exactly on Stratosphere, like in person. He's exact, exactly how he is on Stratosphere Lounge. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that, I remember, I remember when I, uh, I met Jacob Berry in uh, Los Angeles a couple uh, last year, and he told me that like all the same, the same thing was true with all the Daily Wire people. They're they're all pretty much exactly the way they act on screen. Mm-hmm. Ben Shapiro is not acting when he says he wants Michael Knowles fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, um, to that, uh, when Alicia Michael Krause Knowles it, actually is slightly different than he is on screen. Okay, <laughs> no, so... he's at, the same, but... Anytime Alicia Krause would say something along the lines of, Michael, why are you in the makeup room? This is not the dressing room. And Michael would reply, why are you doing makeup in the dressing room? That is 100% Michael Knowles. I will not go into detail, but that is 100% <laughs> Michael Knowles. Oh, man. So, uh, well, what, 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 you were saying that he's slightly different, Bethany? No, that's just like, no, yes, it, she, that's exactly the, He is, Actually, he is one of the most genuine people that you'll meet. He's... Um, he was uh, the first person of the Daily Wire who followed me, and he's he was he's really really wow. I don't even know how to say it. He's one of the most people persons you'll ever meet. He is he's kind of eccentric, like you see him on camera, but that's how he is in person. So he, he feels he's one of those people who, like, if he knows you at all. Like, you are a celebrity to him, which I do feel like it's kind of interesting. If you know anything about someone, you know, everyone in some way is a celebrity. But just, like, I, I have, I'm a big fan of uh, one of my friends. Uh, you might have heard of him. His name is Clay. But... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs that kind of person who's like, wow, it's so great to meet you. Well, it's it's funnier when that happens mutually, as was the case. It's 
you described when when you when, in your uh, your ginger podcast where you like how did a uh, how did Jeremy Boring find out about you then and to the point where he like like was oh, super excited to meet you then? Great question. So obviously first Michael Knowles followed me. Um, he liked a very sparse view of my things, and then I had done a video that I put on my YouTube channel. Uh, let me see what it was called. It was like, uh, it was like, um, he was on a backstage and he'd said something that really resonated with me. And you I called like, it the Jeremy Boring Show or something, or the Boring oh, Show. Oh yeah, that's true. I had this whole joke. I, I still have the Twitter account for it. The Boring Show. That's your the account? Most, like, really, <laughs> it's the most ironically thrilling podcast in America. And so um, that was that was a actually that same account I used as a Michael Moles account. Um, for that was also uh, blithering precari- uh oh, yeah. What was it? Look, blithering prevarication the third. Per- prevarication. The third. Oh, prevarication the third. Yeah, okay. uh, Bethany started that ac- to fill the dead air while Bethany's looking for stuff. Uh, Bethany started that account. When Jeremy was complaining about uh, not having a blue check mark, yeah, that's right. And so she's like, "I'm going to create a Jeremy Boring account to impersonate him to further prove that he needs a blue check mark." Yeah, because you got to know who's who. Like, how are you going to know? Anyway, um, also Jeremy needed more fans, so I was happy to be one of them. Um, uh, here it is. The Boring Show. Don't be ashamed of making money. Jeremy Boring at his finest. So I had this whole little video. I took the clip and I did a few silly special effects with it. And it was like a really, really good clip. And so I tagged him and I was like, I don't know if he'll care. I don't know if he would even, I don't know if I'm really supposed to do this because this isn't my content. But Like, no one's going to ever see it. Well, he messaged me. He followed me, messaged me. I figured he followed me so he could message me. And he said, hey, just so you know, um, like, uh, you're not really supposed to use that material, but I am specifically giving you permission. And I was like, thank you. And he's like, yep, so just so you know, you have permission. And I'm like, cool, I'm good. And then, um, he didn't unfollow me and he would like random things. Like, you know, I'd go a couple yeah, of no, no. When, when she says random things, it'll be like seriously random things. Like where it's like, I have to go to the store to buy potatoes. And then you'll <laughs> look in your likes and it'll be like, Jeremy liked this. And it's like, what? That's relatable. I relate to that tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, (laughs) yeah, I, it was kind of funny, just, like, he didn't stop following me, and then after a while, like, I had done, uh, uh, I had done a picture that, uh, first, of course, Michael Knowles retweeted, and then Jeremy retweeted, and then Ben saw and retweeted, (laughs) So there was enough of that that it was it it was kind of interesting to people, and then around that time, Jeremy messaged me and he's like, "So what's your story?" Like, that's that's a really interesting question for someone to ask. Um, I've had like. Uh, some close friends, uh, some friends of mine, like uh, uh, my old preacher, he likes to ask people, what's your story? But I'd never really had anyone ask that before. And so, you know, I was like, well, this is my story. (laughs) Trying to figure things out. That's my life. And he was like, okay. That was that. And he gave me some advice and helped me out. And I was like, are we friends now? That's kind of interesting. So, I don't know. That happened. And then after that, it just, like, we just 
we're friends and we tease each other on Twitter. And it was fun. Maybe maybe you could answer a random question I've had about him for a while. How long has he been kicking around like the PG Media stuff? Because I know they've mentioned his name like as far back as all the old PJ Media videos, but he didn't really come on camera much, much until they started doing the uh, the big live streams together. It's like how how long how, how long has he been working behind the scenes and all this stuff? Jeremy, a, yeah. a very long time. Oh, he is, he was there with Ben at the beginning. Yeah, okay, so I'm probably almost a bit better for this. Okay. Uh, Jeremy was talking about PJ Media. He I. One of the first times I actually got to sit down and talk to Jeremy uh, was his in his office right after backstage. And I had mentioned like, oh, yeah, but I love PJ Media. I was a huge Bill Whittle fan. And he was like, well, Bill actually might be here because it was during the very beginning of the um, up of the Cold War series. And so he went out and checked. And unfortunately, Bill had already left. Um, but Jeremy was talking about PJ Media, and he was saying it was probably the best online conservative organization that there could have been. Uh, he said the problem was is they didn't promote themselves. And he's, it was a very nice thing to have everything together. And um, Jeremy said that he was producing some of the very earliest videos at uh, PJ Media. He said uh, he gave the name of some of Bill's very early firewalls. Um, I can't remember if he said he did the um, atomic bomb video that Bill had done. Uh, you know, if you can find that on YouTube now, it's, it's, still it's around very there somewhere. I've seen it. It's still twice. there. It's still there. Yeah. But I think Jeremy said that he worked on that and he worked on some of the um, other videos. And so, yeah, Jeremy has been around doing that for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I figured. I I, I just wasn't sure how long he's been in the game. I I assume he's been doing this since mid 2000s or something, because a lot of those a lot of those websites have been. But they, they predate everything that's happening now by a better part of a decade. So it's it's I, I assume that he'd been he's been working either as a producer or an entrepreneur on these things for much longer than people tend to think. Yeah, he has. He he's been doing this for a very, very long time. Um and so like the, the Daily Wire is literally just the latest. He I remember in one of the streams, he said that eventually he's looking at going to be hiring somebody to take over the business side of the Daily Wire, and he's going to be moving to a more on-camera personality like the rest of them, but he, he said it's they're not right there yet. I kind of wondered if he was ever going to pick a, take a, pick a show for himself, because it seemed like something that'd be kind of a natural fit for him, given how effectively everyone has that that has worked at daily wires slept as uh, slipped into their shows i wonder yeah. who they would get i mean then again i don't know a lot of the production crews so well i, I yeah. assume they'd pick another probably some editor from another website that's capable oh. that's proven themselves i mean there's like dozens of big conservative websites out there that could probably do the producing side of things yeah, I, I know for him, for Jeremy right now, backstage is enough. Um, sure. I remember he was talking about that, but um, and and then he had his uh, other sparsely populated show, literally called Enough, and he did that just because there were a few things that would get under his skin enough that um, in between backstages that he would just rant about. So. Uh, he, he does have that. He did an interview with someone a, a long time ago, or they wrote a piece on him. What was that, Clay? It was like... I can't remember, but they wrote a really good piece on him. And yeah, I don't of, remember. I'm going to look it up. Go ahead, you take the floor. I'll look it up. <laughs> well, while she's, while she's doing that, I had another speculative question that you can i mean if you, if you don't if you don't if they get to if you, you can feel free to, to punt the question if you want but it, he's bill Whittle spends so much time around the daily wire guys is there any reason why he hasn't 
tried to kind of work full time with them as opposed to yes. independent? Yeah. Yes. This was actually answered in one of the uh, Stratosphere lounges. Um, Bill does not label such episodes, so good luck finding it. But he said that um, the reason why he did not... Jeremy tried to buy BillWhittle.com. And he was basically going to buy it, dissolve it, and have Bill be one of the main hosts uh, like everyone else. And Bill said something along the lines of, if I were to do that... He's like, I'd easily be the second most watched person at the Daily Wire, which I don't doubt. Right now, uh, I think second most watched is Michael Knowles. Uh, yeah. Prior to that, it was um, prior to Knowles gaining fame, it was Andrew Clavin. Um, I watched but, those numbers change in real time. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, like when, when she was at the Daily Wire, that's when that shift happened. Um. But, yeah, Bill said that he did not want to do it because he likes having the freedom on Stratosphere Lounge that, you know, tonight we're going to have a movie night where we're only going to be talking about movies. And, tomorrow, you know, next week it'll be a general topic. So just hit me with whatever questions you have. And then the week after that, it's going to be all history. And so Bill very much liked to bounce around or likes to bounce around from topic to topic to topic. He likes and, that freedom and flexibility. Yeah, and if you look at, if you go back to the very beginning of the Andrew Clavin show and the Michael Knowles show, uh, not so much with Ben, because Ben's show always was meant to be a political show, but uh, Clavin and Knowles' shows were meant to be more cultural, topical, um you know, more on the entertainment side of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And over time, they've just turned into copies of the Ben Shapiro show. And the reason why is that's what the audience wants to watch. Uh, Knowles, one of the first times we talked to Knowles, Knowles was talking about that. And he said, I was originally hired on as a cultural consultant. And he said, when we got the show, that's originally what the show was meant to be, was a uh, pure cultural commentary. He's like, and he said, the problem is, is once we start talking about cultural topics, people don't watch. And so uh, he was saying that that's actually kind of a big problem. And that's why they talk so much about the political stuff on both Drew's show and um, Knowles' show. It's like at the same time, there's nobody in the back room going up to him saying, you have to talk about this today. There's nobody doing that. They get to write their own shows. With that being said, there are topics that are very topical and the audience likes certain stuff. Um, just for an example, uh, YouTube has been really going after Bill uh, really hard. His numbers will creep up, creep up to about 11,000, 12,000, and then YouTube will hit him and bury him and his numbers will creep down to... Uh, no, not creep down. Like, Yeah, they'll just... That's right. They'll just sheer cliff plummet. rates drop down can, to I can, seven to 8,000. I can attest to that. I mean, I've been... Re recently, I've had the urge to try to go back and find some of his older videos, and I looked up the, the videos by name in the search bar, and I couldn't find them after, after more, like, until I went, like, three pages down into this YouTube search. Like, there, it's almost impossible to find his old Afterburner stuff. Oh, yeah. I, like, I would try and get his, um... Oh, Bethany even tried, find... because she does the updating, she tries to find the, um, newest videos and searching by name she can't find. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to try and find, like, the thumbnails so that, uh, I eventually had to, like, have access to their folder because I couldn't look up the images even if I searched it by name in quotes, which is really weird because you can do that for, like, all videos and there were just some really screwy things like sometimes it would be the first result but that was very rare like uh, all of the i've talked to scott they put in when you're uploading a youtube video there's a bunch of tags and scott puts in the tags and he puts in the name of the video in the tags and uh youtube definitely has it out for built they try um the only they, thing 
they really try to bury them. I'm wondering if like some of the different shows are ones are tags that like they try to bury because I know like if you search virtue signal, you can see that just fine. If it's a right angle, not a chance. It's yeah. very rare to to have that one come up. Yeah. Um. Eventually, every once in a while, a video breaks through. Like one of his most watched videos is a more recent video on um Joe Biden's uh mental problems. This is from, a, um, it's from 2021 or 2020, but, uh, during the elections and that one had about 55,000 views and it really stands out. And I could only guess that's because, um, some big page found it and spread it around on Facebook. And that's why that or, one has a bunch of views. Or maybe Scott just put, forgot to put in one of the tags that gets buried. Do, uh, that, like, I don't, who knows? yeah, I don't know, okay. but. I found the article about Jeremy, and it was by Vanity Fair, Let Me Make You Famous, How Hollywood Invented Ben Shapiro. Now, it's not <laughs> that very title. correct, because it's like, oh, yeah, sure, Hollywood, yeah, Jeremy is totally Hollywood. No, he knows stuff about Hollywood, but, like, all of those people are not Hollywood. You can't get into Hollywood as a conservative. It's not easy. Yeah, it's it's really weird because just on that front, and then I want to circle back. Um, okay, sorry. It just started yeah, pouring exactly. out my side, so sorry if it gets loud on my end. You're good. Um, but uh, like Bill, Jeremy, uh, Ben. Ben never worked in Hollywood, but his parents did. Um, they all have credentials in Hollywood. And so they know how the machine is run. And so when they say that it's biased against conservatives, it's not an outsider's perspective. It's an insider's perspective. Um, I mean, and you talk to Andrew Clavin and he has all those, like once he came out as, once he started to have some views that were relatively conservative or he wouldn't go to the like latest let's fundraise for this democrat politician parties like he he stopped getting calls and yeah uh ben shapiro's book primetime propaganda the the conclusion of that book is a bit dated but the book um is still very well put together because it's really a history book of hollywood like the darker side of hollywood uh, Dark side, <laughs> well, there's, there's but, a few of those, so. Yeah, and so that that book really gains insight into what's going on. Um, but yeah, to, to get back on how all this is impacting Bill, it's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of background stuff that's happening at YouTube that is just, not conducive to how he does things it's stuff that the daily wire can get around uh because the daily wire does have the news side of it that does very well on facebook but um yeah it's youtube definitely has it out for bill and it's super annoying but we're we're trying to fix some of that on the uh social media front but it it's one of those annoying things that I know Bill's talked about getting off of YouTube and a lot of his fans are like, you know, oh, you know, let's just get off of YouTube. You know, let's let's go to Rumble. Let's go to, you know, one of these other sites. And I'm sorry, I hate Rumble's interface. Um, it's not good. Maybe it will be in the next five years, but not right now. Um, I mean, and they don't it's, have nearly the kind of the kind of funding YouTube has. Which, yeah, well, you know, they don't have the funding that Daily Bill doesn't have the type of funding that Daily Wire or um, Louder with Crowder has. the The reason why Bill went to um, do the history podcasts for Daily Wire is because he was running out of money. Uh, that's that's not some big behind the scene thing. That's something Bill has talked about in his Stratosphere lounges. But I mean, th Bill gets money off of YouTube of people watching his videos and when they knock those numbers down it 
really hurts him. So, might- yeah, it, it it's just annoying and frustrating and all that. I know um, he has a subscription service through his website, but nowadays I would it wouldn't be it would probably be prudent if he actually opened like a Patreon for like secondary support. I mean, there's like he like, he actually does have a Patreon. He just doesn't really promote it that much. Yeah, I guess it was something that he had from when he first went independent that he just kind of forgot about. Um, but I know somebody was talking to him about uh, possibly making a locals account. That would be good for him because that would be able. That would let him kind of con- uh, collect his entire community in the same space. I mean, part yeah. Of, part of the problem with like social media in general is that when you try to take your 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 community off YouTube, you lose the normie audience, and that's going to cut a lot of your immediate access off. So you can't just share videos on Facebook for all your family and friends, and, it, and at that point, you essentially your presence gets limited down to just the immediate people in your circle. So, if it's a, I mean, I, I get the appeal of taking things off YouTube. I mean, there, there are big political commentators on YouTube that have just shifted over to BitChute and Odyssey and Rumble, but they're never going to get the heights of what you get on YouTube just because YouTube is... No, which is, which is exactly why Bill is staying on YouTube. Clay has um, ranted about this extensively. Yeah, it, it's... When, when I went to his event in Ramona, it was me... My friend I brought, and literally two other people in the audience that I could see who got up to basically tell Bill how awesome he was. They didn't really have questions. Um, But it was like the four of us out of a 100-person-plus auditorium, maybe 200-person-plus auditorium, who were under the age of 50. Um, And I know if you look at Daily Wire's audience the average age of their audience is 30s to 40s. And so that's massive. Um, I I know that's something that Bill wants, and that's why he's going after the Colonies Project um, on Unreal Engine, to which I'm not saying that that's a bad move. It's just Bill's a bit of a perfectionist, which I'm glad he has people he respects, talking to him uh because uh Seamus Coughlin was on the Babylon B podcast and he was saying out is better than perfect and with the um commercial that Bill is working on of just him and Zoe with that knight in shining armor thing you know um like where they're going to invade the DNC headquarters and it's going to be hokey and it's going to be absurd but it, it's going to uh, it's going to be a little cringy, but it's going to be fun. And it's one of those things of when you're building something, you know, online or heck, even if it's a TV show, it's going to be cringy. And, but it's going, as long as the concept's there, people are going to forgive you. Like think about all these great TV shows that we have now where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that show's great. Don't watch the first season, you know, <laughs> or watch it because it lays the groundworks of everything. But, you know, even The Office has a lot of cringy episodes. Yeah, well, even then, it, that's another example where people are like, if you can get past the first season, it gets really good. Like Doctor Who. I do like <laughs> Doctor Who. Well, that's a very long-running that's, established show. So, that's true. Um, but, um, yeah, so I, I've told Bill, I'm like, it, it doesn't matter if it's bad at first. It's as long as you keep going with it and it improves over time, which... Um, Bill gets hyper focused on building the scenery and making sure every little detail is perfect. And one of his animator friends was like, "Stop! You're going to spend all day, and you're not going to get anything done if you do that." So just can um, I also say um, it's eerie how similar Bill Whittle and I are sometimes. <laughs> I like when it comes to things like okay. You know what? I'm tired. Just gotta. It's fine. It's fine. But, um, no, we like to do it so detailed. I mean, the first time that we really were like, okay, we're gonna talk about me doing the Twitter, um, the whole Twitter account thing. Uh, he, I was gonna call him and, um, 
he, I, I can't remember if he called or I called, but he's like, oh, yes, Bethany, thank you. I had an alarm on my phone so I wouldn't forget. And I was like, so did I. <laughs> yeah, Bill is very much one of these people. Again, longtime fans are going to know that he has a lot of plans and they quickly get bigger than he was expecting them to. And then um he should just pass them all off to you clay good luck <laughs> he can direct them all yeah, for all these years he'll never he'll never have time to do anything ever again yeah it, he he needs somebody just to sit down and be like we're working on this now um which is one of the things jeremy said to me in a meeting uh where jeremy's like he's a great guy he just needs direction <laughs> Um, he does. I think he does have a lot of direction, but he well, definitely I'm, be a lot better if he. Um, uh, he just has so much. Yeah, he has a lot of ideas. He has problems just sitting down and working them out. Like I know, for like going back again to 2016, 2017, Bill wanted to make his show in the Star Citizen universe. And I didn't know him back then, but it would, I would have just told him, just, just machinimate the, the whole thing. And other people had told that to Bill, and Bill's like, no, 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 it's, there's these minor, in, uh, there's these minor, you know, just very small things that, you know, I don't like. Like, one of the things is, um, if you ever pointed in the game, um, it would very obviously turn into a character model that would then be separated from the world, do the thing you asked, and then go back to being in the world. And he hated that. And it's just like, you know, one of those things, out is better than perfect. Just, you know, just get it out there. If it's all in game, everybody knows you're running it in game. Just just get it out there. But uh, I'm excited to see what he does with the uh, with his colonies project. Uh, I know he's been working a lot, very hard on that, and um, he's going to have this commercial for it out pretty soon. Um, or not a commercial for the colonies, but a commercial advertising just the um, animation side of what he's been working on. And the first installment with that should be out pretty soon here, like in a month or so. Um, and I, I think that'll open a lot of people's eyes to what he's actually working on. Because people our age, you know, when Bill says, oh, I'm going to go into Unreal Engine and I'm going to make a TV show. All of us, you know, are like, oh, cool. So it's going to be like a cutscene, just a, you know, a 30 minute or an hour long cutscene. Cool. But to the people who have money, who are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, if they don't play video games, they're not going to understand what, you know, that is. So, I mean, given, given everything you guys have said, have you guys been trying to get him to do more podcast appearances then to kind of get build more promotion? I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I can't speak to the numbers. Maybe you can, but I would assume that him being on Babylon B probably did give him a bump i would assume uh the the biggest bumps i've seen have been um uh the what we saw podcast we we've ran some polls just on the twitter page of you know hey where'd you find bill and have you seen his personal content yet and by far pretty much everybody we've interacted with has been um saying oh uh, the What We Saw podcast, that's, that's where we all know him from. Um, the Babylon B podcast actually has about the same numbers as um, Bill. And on the Babylon B website, the most popular things are their cartoons and satire videos, not necessarily their podcast. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was surprised to see him on it, but I watch that every week. So I, I, maybe I'm one of the outliers in that, but... Have you guys tried reaching out to other podcasts to see if you can get him on? Or has he even let you do that? Um, not yet, because 
I need to go meet with him to try and get some of this past him. Uh, because he's, he is busy. And so if you text him about things, it's a 50, 50 shot, whether he's going to get to it or not, or whether it's just going to get lost in the madness. So it's a lot easier just to have him sit down in front of you and say, this is what's happening. This is what we're doing. We need you to do this. Well, if, if it were me, I would try his, my best to get him on anything that would accept him. I mean, I don't know if you can get him on Joe Rogan, but you could definitely, you've got a lot of strings you could pull, especially between the two of you with all the connections you have. We could get him on Crowder. I don't think that would well, go well. well. <laughs> this leads to another question. Does, did, because Crowder says that he, that he tried to pitch a comedy sketch to Bill Whittle and Bill Whittle hated it. Does, yeah, they, do they like um, each other or do they, they just kind they of They like it? each other now. But they, it was really funny because they did not originally because, I mean, okay, Crowder. We have to imagine what kind of a person Crowder is. He's like just this really crowd. Okay, this isn't Crowder now. This guy. is also Crowder at 18 yeah. when he then, started. Oh, my gosh. I don't even want to think about what Crowder at 18 was like. But And then you have Bill who's just kind of like this posh, um, you know, he's, he still has a lot of that air of like uh british. well i mean he grew up in bermuda under british rules so. yeah like he he has a lot of that like um what would you even call it self-esteem no not not self-esteem uh, he's british self okay he grew up stiff under upper lip. british <laughs> he has self-respect stiff upper, stiff upper lip yeah he's so like yeah so it's kind of funny because both of those people, like Crowder will go to, he does not care how far he goes humiliating himself. Bill has some standards. <laughs> Which is funny because you, you go back to like the oldest videos on Crowder's channel, you can still see Bill Whittle in a few of them, but he's really not like, he's really not prominent in any of them. Like there's, if you, like if you watch the Benghazi video, you see Andrew Clavin is like, one-on-one -on -one talking with him and he's like describing the situation he's like wait a minute how did you get into my house i climbed in through a window mr crowder i mean uh, we no. reference that all the time especially oh, since yeah. um <laughs> since clavin says on his show you know and if you ring that bell on youtube i will personally deliver the news to your house and, and so, so we have that joke of like yes he will yeah but how did you get in here i climbed I in, crawled through, in the through the window <laughs> That's classic. Classic. Oh, man. But, yeah, yeah, I don't really have any other specific questions about the what you guys do. Do you, have, do you want to... Uh, uh, I can give a rundown of basically what we do for the posts. Um, so, Bill will upload um, videos, and Bethany takes those, and she uploads a thumbnail onto Instagram, and uploads it onto Facebook. Facebook, or not Facebook, Scott Ott does Facebook, um, Twitter. but onto Twitter. Twitter, and Instagram, and Clay ends up doing most of the silly stuff, which is funny because I'm better at the silly stuff, <laughs> but Clay knows Bill's content so well that he can, or I'm better at silly stuff for other accounts, but because Clay knows Bill Whittle so well, he is really good at that. Yeah, so and the... I was gonna so say, doing, if, doing wacky stuff with Bill Whittle seems a little bit out of his out of his uh, his persona. So yeah, well, there, there's certain memes that Bill has built up over the years, though. Yeah. Um, you know, like if there was a stretch on TSL where he'd insult the audience after uh, the end of the show. Um, you can find those where he's the show ends and he's like, "I can't believe they bought that." It was, idiots and rude can, can you believe i got these people to pay me money you know he'll do he used to do stuff like that after the end of the show and it's just really funny um one of the other things he would do is um when he had that show with the nra hot mike he'd always start off on uh, you know saying well hot mike was supposed to be here today but he's off getting his nails done and you know can't touch a doorknob so uh, I'm here instead. <laughs> this, so there, uh, also the insults he would give between him and Andrew Clavin on, um, 
all the Clavin and the culture or on the Clavin and Whittle shows. Oh, man. Um, like, but if you want to talk about Barry, I can't find any of those anymore. Oh, those are so good, though. The, there's a few people who have put uh, playlists together on YouTube, but uh, Town Hall Media now owns the PJ Media. Um, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. And you you have to search for those. Uh, on YouTube generally, because otherwise, nearly all of that's gone. Um, or you, I, you might be able to go on DuckDuckGo and reverse search it if you know what you're looking for. But yeah, probably. But um, I know they haven't deleted it; they've just buried it. Um, but yeah, so so there's there's small little memes that Bill Whittle has done over the years that if if you can really tap into the essence of some of those are really funny but and you can get into it but it's it's few and far between yeah mm -hmm. it's, a spe it's a specialty kind of thing yeah um i feel but, like sorry go ahead i feel like it would be even better if we had a specific angle of the bill whittle show that we interacted with with our accounts Kind of like how I had all those silly things with um, uh, all those other silly accounts. Um, I mean, like the boring show. It's not Jeremy boring, per se. It is the boring show. So I would do like fake. Uh, I, did, I did over 50 show titles. I did over 50 show titles of like the most boring headlines ever like like something about toothpaste or old socks <laughs> or um my louder with prouder mug account i'll make everything from a mug's perspective and my mug has like this snarky um uh egotistical view of the world where like oh yes all of you human peasants type of thing um Whereas, like, well, I, I have the best mug. I am the best mug. Um, all this stuff. But with Bill Whittle, it's like, it's just Bill Whittle. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this because I'm not as big of a fan of Bill. Or I haven't been following Bill for nearly as long as Clay has. So I have a hard time. Um, sometimes I'll go with, like, moon landing stuff because I know he loves the moon. But I don't really know anything about the moon landing. But Clay does because he watched all that. Um, so it's it's like it's kind of tricky, but we make it work and it's fun. Yeah, we're we're still kind of looking for like what specifically to do with Instagram because so much of that is pictures. And when I go and see Bill and I go to the Stratosphere Lounge, I try to take some pictures so we have stuff to upload, but. I would really like to get more behind the scenes stuff and that's just hard to get because it means I'd have to drive up to LA and physically be there to get pictures and video and stuff like that. Um, I really like to um, upload pictures with quotes because like photo editing, that's one of, that's something I really like. I really like photo manipulation, but um I, it's kind of tricky because since I'm just one person, that means as soon as the video comes out, regardless of what my, the rest of my day looks like, that would mean I'd have to watch the video immediately, pull out that quote immediately, find the perfect picture immediately, get like a quote immediately and then upload it and it's and put it together and upload it so like you know it's a piece of art it takes a while so i've done that a few times but usually by the time i get it like by the time i'm like you know if i'm on the ball like it's usually a little yeah, too he, late for it to be relevant yeah it is a little hard with how much content he puts out mm -hmm. there there's technically a schedule on when stuff gets released but it's all the stratosphere lounge gets shot on tuesdays um the moving back to america shows get shot um basically when 
Bill has time to get around and do it. Uh, which is at some point during the day, usually he'll go into the office in the morning. And then the um, virtue signals get shot on Thursdays. And then Bill goes home, works on the colonies or his current commercial, and then he comes back and does TSL. Um, And the shows kind of get uploaded when they get uploaded. Um, I, I know scheduling is really big for the YouTube algorithms and just constant viewership in general. Uh, but he, I mean, that guy just busts his butt off with how much stuff he does. Like, mm-hmm. it's surprising. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, I, I think we're wrap, we're running close to the uh, the end of our time, but I guess I'll just kind of end on, on by saying that I, uh, that I kind of discovered Bill Whittle too while I was in college. Like, I, I didn't mention this, we were discussing it earlier, when you were discussing it earlier, Clay, but I stumbled onto him right as I was beginning to think that I might uh, that I might be politically progressive, and I found him and Andrew Clavin, and suddenly I realized it was okay to still have the beliefs I had when I was a kid, so I owe him <laughs> a lot politically for kind of setting me on the track I'm on now. Whether that's ultimately profitable or not remains to be seen, but uh, <laughs> I, I definitely owe him a lot intellectually so i that i mean i actually have uh i have a dvd of his uh mr virtual president signed that i keep in my office next to me so it's Aww. yeah and it, it's it, he signed it with sh- uh, silver sharpie when i'm like I, i'm gonna keep this and i put it in a nice frame keep it up there so it, it, yeah, I, I just friend. realized i didn't finish talking about why he didn't move uh we got rabbit trailed off but why he didn't officially move over to the daily wire I kind of did, but um, I yeah, just want to finish that up. That's wrap on that real quick. Huh? Let's wrap on that real quick. Yeah, so he didn't move over to the Daily Wire because, more or less, he would lose a lot of freedom and it would become uh, just another daily show at the Daily Wire. And that's not what he wanted to do. And so the, the history podcast that he's currently doing is more up his alley and something he, he really enjoys doing. So... Uh, there will be another season of America's Forgotten Heroes. It's Woo! just in the uh, planning stages right now of who he wants to go. So when there's TSL, just go on Facebook and talk about somebody. Um, you know, has to be American on who you think does not deserve as much or does not get as much recognition, uh, and allow Bill to uh, think about that. Um, TSL. TSL is typically every Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, right Angle is, I believe, just about every day. Uh, usually content does not get uploaded on the weekends. So uh, go to BillWhittle.com and subscribe and go to uh, at BillWhittle underscore com uh, for Twitter and I think that's the Instagram too. So come check us out. Come hang out and enjoy Bethany and I's content as we post Bill Whittle stuff. Mm-hmm. There you go. And I can attest that the jo- the uh, I listened to the Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain episode of America's Forgotten Heroes and it was very good. But yeah, I it was great kind of talking to you both. I I I think I've individually talked to you once or twice both, but it's kind of great talking about, talking about all this and you know geeking out over like the you know, over Bill Whittle together. So thank you so much. Yeah, anytime. Sure, have a good night. Thank you. The Antisocial Network is a Groupthink Productions podcast. Editing, producing, and hosting are by Tyler Hummel, artwork by Crystal Cowley, and original music was composed by Melissa LaFira and the late Dan Smola. Like, subscribe, and please let us know what you think about the show in the comments below if you'd like to see anyone interesting be a guest on the show. Thank you for listening.